Rapid just dropped even more updates on the PTR, and there is more now than the last three combined, so there's a lot here. If you missed my first video breaking down the previous PTR updates during the week, check that out at the end of this video. Otherwise, dive into it. Starting off, we have archetype updates to the tank. These updates include Courage, change it so it applies Stagger to targets struck by weapon combo finishers. Courage generation from Shield Assault and weapon combo finishers has been increased from 25 to 33. Vengeance progression steps are no longer tied to shielding. Damage reduction to 90% of base damage, change the cost to 33 courage, change from 4 steps to 3 steps, added a cleave mechanic similar to the basic attacks, damage increase per step has been rolled into the base version and reduced from 15% to 5% per stack, change the buff icon to indicate what step of vengeance you are on, relentless vengeance now increases the sh shielding amount by 50%, ground pound courage cost reduced from 40 to 33, adjusted this to be a wide line attack, fortify no longer has a minimum courage cost and blitz will now always travel the full distance to target or stop your character after two seconds for corruption they made changes so you need to force flag for pvp to heal a corrupted or combatant player added a setting for required force flag to heal combatants to combat settings so you can toggle that on or off and this has been a thing a lot where somebody attacks you as a cleric and you end up healing them instead of dealing damage with your dual use spells they made changes so you no longer become a combatant for healing yourself made changes so you no longer become a combatant for damaging a corrupted player. Corrupted and combatant statuses will be more clear. For example, health bars are always red for targets that you can harm. Added corruption stats to the character page and reduce the number of kills required to grind off corruption. And spoiler alert, it was a lot before. Commissions. They added a new commission to Winstead, Mirrorless, Samias Hope, New Ayla, and Jova. Added bounty commissions to the pool of available commissions for players who are level 3 to 8. And adjusted the area where characters get credit for kill commissions around Lionhold. Environment slash visuals made several visual and lighting updates to Samaya's Hope, which is the new Veiloon starting area outside of the ruins of Ayla. They made lighting updates to Carfin. They fixed various road visual bugs. They fixed various visual bugs with terrain and fixed an issue with beards not working with all armors. For nodes, they reduced the cost of mayoral commissions and increased the amount of time before they expire. Player commodity vendors will now show when players do not have enough storage space to purchase commodities and added a level requirement to plunder quests and move the plunder under quest givers to nodes. Economy, increase the number of tier 1 gatherable spawns, increase the max stack size for bags to be 20 for novice, 40 for apprentice, and 60 to journeyman, added the sweat of your brow quest to Samaya's hope, change the sweat of your brow quest to provide one of five different horses, added copper gear to Lionhold and node vendors, added descriptions to Glint player commodities and stolen cargo to explain how they can be used, added higher job sizes to processing receipts, changed animal husbandry receipts to separate the mount and beast of burden outcomes, removed profession stations from the ruins of Ayla's starting area, added more recipes using lumber, updated gathering station icons, fixed an issue preventing players from finishing the sweat of your brow if they close the quest turn in dialogue, fixed bugs with unpacking commodities, and a adjusted the spawn time of some trees. For NPCs, they adjusted the location of the NPCs in Samaya's Hope, reduced the elite ranking for some bandits within the Highwayman Hills courtyard from three stars, made changes to enemies in the Church of the Seven Stars, adjusted the attack range for plant type enemies so basic attacks will hit targets even if they're running away, made changes to enemy difficulty and placement in the Ursine Cave. For loot, they added additional loot drops for bows, focuses, and shields, updated the gear drop chance for quality, and dropped gear based off the star ranking of mobs, fixed a bug causing loot to not be automatically delivered to the character that won the loot roll, reduced the loot roll duration from 60 seconds to 15 seconds, fixed bugs with chat loot roll notifications, and changed loot visuals. These will change as you remove items from a loot pile instead of after the loot window is closed. For performance, they improved the performance on certain areas of the map, made improvements to reduce server crashes. In general, they fixed issues causing the camera to sometimes get stuck in the character's head, fixed various mount movement visuals, fixed issues with the scale of icons on the minimap and fixed a variety of typos. So massive, massive changes here on top of everything we've already talked about this week is going to bleed into one massive build for this weekend for players to jump in and test and continue to give their feedback on. And I absolutely love to see the amount of content and the amount of changes Intrepid is making this fast in less than a week's amount of time.